Hello, and welcome back to chapter nine. <clears throat> back in chapter eight, we learned about confidence intervals and how we can use them to predict something about the population. Now in chapter nine, we're going to take information that we believe is true about the population and use it to decide if an outcome seems reasonable or not. So we're gonna learn some basics about hypothesis testing. Um, a hypothesis is a statement regarding a characteristic of one or more populations. So we are going to talk about the population mean, the population mean, and also the population proportion. Those are gonna be the two that we're gonna talk about. A hypothesis testing is a formal process based on sample evidence and probability used to test the hypotheses. Our first step is gonna to be to make a statement regarding the nature of the population. Then we're gonna collect evidence, sample data to test the statement. And last, you're going to analyze the data to assess the plausibility or likelihood of the statement. The actual test begins by considering two hypotheses. They are called the null hypotheses and the alternative hypotheses. <clears throat> the null hypotheses is, we're going to use this symbol, H0. It is a statement of no difference between sample means or proportions or no difference between a sample mean or proportion and a population mean or proportion. In other words, the difference equals zero. HA, the alternative hypothesis, it is a claim about the population that is contradictory to H0 and what we conclude when we reject H0. So there are three parameters that we could test. We could test the mean, the population mean, the population proportion, or the population standard deviation. We are only going to look at these two this semester, the mean and the population proportion. There are three types of tests. So we could test that there's an equal versus the greater than, we call this a right-tailed test, or we can do equal versus the less than, we call this as a left-tailed test, or a not equal to, and we call this a two-tailed test. <clears throat> so let's look at some examples on these pieces. Example one says, our null, um, hypothesis says no more than 30% of the registered voters in Santa Clara County voted in the primary election. P is less than or equal to 30. Now, really in the H0, we are only going to have an equal to. The alternative tells us that we're testing more than. That's the more than 30. Example two says, a medical trial is conducted to test whether or not a new medicine reduces cholesterol by 25%. State the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null is um, and it's gonna be the mean because it's a level, a level of cholesterol. So it's the mean level is equal to zero, the difference, or the alternative is the mean, it says a medical trial is conducted to test whether or not new medicine reduces, so the difference is less than 25%. On this one, because they talk about percentages, um, if it's not the measurement of the cholesterol and it's just a percentage of cholesterol, it really could be considering a proportion is equal to zero, the proportion difference, or the, the alternative proportion is um, greater than 0.25. So that they reduced it by 25% or more. And it says whether or not. So it didn't say more than 25%, it just said whether or not. So we're gonna do a not equal to because it said whether or not. Um, so because they talked about percentages, we're gonna go with, instead of just the level of cholesterol, we're gonna talk about the increase or decrease as a percentage. So that's why I chose proportion. Example three. 
We want to test whether the mean height of eighth graders is 66 inches. State the null and alternative hypotheses. So the null is it's equal to 66. And it says we want to test whether the mean height is 66. And so that would be a not equal to. Example four says we want to test if it takes fewer than 45 minutes to teach a lesson plan. State the null and alternative. The null is always an equal to, and they want to test to see if it's fewer. So that would be a less than. So the null hypothesis is always an equal to, and the alternative is the other choices. The last example for 9.1. On a state driver's test, about 40% pass the test on the first try. We want to test if more than 40% pass on the first try. So uh, null is equal to, and it was a test for more than 40%. So that would be a greater than. So the null is always an equal to, and the alternative is always a greater than um, or less than or a not equal to. So an equal, a not equal to, a greater than, or a less than. So this is a greater than because it said more than. So these are some of the pieces for a hypothesis test. Catch me back for lesson 9.2.